Welcome to Orange Weekly, presented by Krause Health. Alongside Nate Mink, I'm Brent Dax. Coming up, Syracuse football head coach Dino Babers offers lessons in adversity. Plus, Mike Waters will join us to talk about a very important five-game stretch ahead for Syracuse basketball. But Nate, we start with this season for Syracuse football. No matter what happens on Saturday against Wake Forest, things didn't not only go according to plan, but by expectation. Maybe we could argue those expectations were too high, but to only win four or five games, depending on what they do against Wake Forest, that's not exactly something that's an anomaly, Nate. This is something that's been building up over the past few years, isn't it? Brent, since Syracuse joined the ACC, they've missed a bowl game in five of the seven years. So as Dino Babers likes to say, this is not a happening. This is a trend and it needs to be addressed. And I think it is in the process of being addressed until you can get over that hump though, I think it's still gonna take a few more years. You know, the off-season review that John Wildtack and Dino Babers do every year continuously looks at uh, areas that they can continue to invest in, the infrastructure, the capital improvements of the program, facilities, staffing, recruiting resources. You know, they, they are making investments in those, but it's going to take a while for that stuff to kick in. You look at the Carrier Dome renovation, next year is when they get the first phase, the second phase is still a couple more years after that. $25 million donation was announced earlier this fall. We won't maybe see those improvements for you know, years down the road. So I think you know, it's, it's still gonna be kind of a continual process to get this place in a position where they can consistently compete at the top of their division. Those are a lot of big picture things in the short term. Brian Ward was fired as defensive coordinator during the season. Maybe some more coaching changes. Maybe Syracuse hits the JUCO market for another quarterback and any other position really that can help the team. Recruiting is always important and we'll see how that class turns out. A lot to keep an eye on during this offseason. But one more game to go before we get to that offseason, Nate. And a week ago, Syracuse played a Louisville team that can score in bunches, has a good quarterback. Hey, Wake Forest fits a lot of those descriptions as well. Brent, this, this Wake Forest team reminds me a lot of last year's Syracuse team. They have a fourth-year quarterback in Jamie Newman, who's one of the best dual-threat quarterbacks in the country. He's played through some pain this year. Uh, their offensive line has three seniors, including two fifth-year senior tackles. Uh, they had some injuries at the wide receiver position that has sort of taken a little bit of fire out of that offense, but you know, their defense is getting enough stops. They have a really strong edge rusher. They have two really, really good lockdown cornerbacks. Uh, they've complemented that tempo system very well this year and wakes in a position if they get a win to get to nine wins and a chance at 10 wins uh, in the bowl game, just as Syracuse did it last, ago, last year. And poetically, <laughs> It still might not be enough for them to get the, to the Orange Bowl because I think the winner of Virginia, Virginia Tech this weekend is right. going to go to the Orange Bowl. And we thought before the season this game could be for the Orange Bowl for Syracuse, how things have changed. So all that said about Wake Forest, Nate, I'm going to say Syracuse finishes with a loss and finishes the season at 4-8 and eight overall. I think Wake Forest comes in and wins this game 41-28. to 28. What's your score? 42-28. How about that? I think Once we're, again, we're seeing we're a, right I think line. we're seeing a similar game. I do think Wake has more offensive firepower. They did lose Scotty Washington and Sage Surratt, their two top receivers early this season. But you know that offensive line is is in good shape. Jamie Newman is a really really dangerous quarterback. Cade Carney uh, and a freshman running back is is doing enough. You know, 500 yards each for the two of them. And I think the defense again will be able to get enough stops to be able to get the win. Interesting note about Wake Forest too. Their kicker set an NCAA record last week, 32 straight field goals and counting. Most accurate kicker in the country, just as Syracuse had the most accurate kicker in the country a year ago. The it's, ties it's are unbelievable. There. Yeah. Well, let's hear from Syracuse football head coach Dino Babers. He knows it's been a rough season for the Orange. What are those lessons that come from adversity? It's time for Syracuse Soundbites. Mike, an easy walk in the park for Syracuse against Bucknell this past Saturday. And a surprise in a way, it's a Bucknell team that's been in the NCAA tournament in recent years and thought would give Syracuse a little bit of a push. Uh, quite the opposite. 
Yeah, this is a Bucknell team that tied Colgate last year for the regular season title in the Patriot League. Uh, they're a perennial power in that league. They got a lot of guys back. And Syracuse just played great from tip to buzzer. Played great on defense, uh, held Bucknell under 30% shooting from the field. And then on the offensive end, man, the three-pointers were falling for Syracuse. You'll like this, 9 of 11 from the free throw line. That's right. Yeah, free throws matter even in blowouts, everybody. But, buddy, Bayheim made shots. Uh, everybody was cooking. And, and the subs, the, the young guys especially, the freshmen off the bench, they got extended minutes, which I, which I think is going to be extremely important as we head on to the rest of the schedule. And I think it's important that this team knows what they're like when they're at their best because they're about to go into a five-game stretch here. This is not hyperbole in any way, Mike, that this could determine Syracuse's NCAA tournament fate. A November schedule? Yes, it could because these next five games are very important for a lot of reasons. Yeah, now Syracuse opened the season against Virginia. But other than that Virginia game, these next five are the only f games in the portion of the schedule prior to New Year's that are going to be considered either quad one or quad two. Everything else is quad three or four, which are kind of, if you don't win those, you're really in trouble. But these are the games that can boost your resume, beginning with Oklahoma State on Wednesday night, and then they're going to play either Penn State or Ole Miss. They'll move on. They're going to come home and play Iowa. And then road games, Georgia Tech and Georgetown. Syracuse really needs minimum two, probably better off getting three of I these so, yeah. if they want to really you know, boost their resume and not put themselves in a big hole entering the ACC portion of the schedule. And somewhere Doug Gottlieb and Dick Vitale weep because they cannot mock Syracuse's non-conference schedule in this case. So Mike, as we saw in the Bucknell game and we will see in these up games upcoming, you know, Syracuse is really challenging itself. That being said, what is a weakness we've seen so far that Syracuse needs to correct in those games and really something we're going to see going forward that they're going to be working on? They need to figure out a way to get some inside scoring. And I really don't know how you do it because you can't go out and recruit a low post player who can play and has experience. I think the guy who can help them there is Quincy Garrier. He's coming off the bench now, and if you look at his numbers over the last two or three games, the freshman out of Montreal is starting to get it. He's going inside. He's using his 220-pound frame to establish position in there. You know, you've got guys like Elijah Hughes, Joe Girard, Buddy Bayheim. They're all going to be scoring mostly three-pointers or jump shots. Quincy's a guy who can go in and get you offensive boards, easy putbacks, and then go to the line. Watch him and watch his development to see if Syracuse can shore up that part of their game. That is Orange Weekly presented by Kraus Health. For Mike Waters, for Nate Mink, we wish you all a happy Thanksgiving, and we'll talk to you next time.